the International Space Station. Next year, it will be home to Britain's first official astronaut, Tim Peake. But how is he preparing for his six-month mission? I'm at the European Astronaut Centre in Cologne, and as you can see, there are life-size replicas of parts of the International Space Station. And it's here that Tim Peake is going to learn how to live and work in space. Tim. Hello, Paolo. How nice to see you. Good to meet you. Tim Thank told you me he wants all of us to be part of his ground control team. We'll get people involved in even in designing the, the, the name of the mission and the patch for the mission, uh, but also things like design a meal for an astronaut for a day, uh, that Is kind of stuff. Is this something that you'll eat? Absolutely, yeah. So something that will actually get cooked and will actually get sent to the space station and I will eat it uh, on board. Today, he's going to show me what he does. He's experienced zero gravity in an aeroplane, but only for a few seconds at a time as the plane plummets. To learn how to work in space, he needs to train underwater. Hi, Tim. Hi, so you're obviously training for zero G. How similar is it, as far as you know, to the real thing? We can practice working with these cumbersome gloves. If you can imagine in a pressurized spacesuit, it's very hard just to bend your fingers with the pressure inside the glove. And we have to manipulate things such as these tethers in order to perform tasks and operate tools so we can practice working outside the space station using this equipment. And he told me the thing he most wants to do is a spacewalk. Tim has also got to learn how to work as part of a tight-knit team. And what better way of doing that than taking a car to pieces with your fellow astronauts. As well as getting to know his team, Tim has got to get to grips with the equipment. This is where Tim Peake will be working. It's a replica of the European part of the International Space Station and it's here he'll be carrying out various scientific experiments. He'll come through here when he wants to interact with astronauts from different countries. Over there is the Japanese section and this is where the Americans and Russians work in this direction. Come and have a look through where he'll be sleeping. This is Tim Peake's bedroom. You can see clean socks and headphones and a sleeping bag, but no bed. That's because Tim will be asleep floating in space. One of the best things about the International Space Station is the view. Take a look through this window of the planet Earth directly below us. So first step is to unlock all of the latches and remove the casing. And now for the science training. So at the moment I'm learning how to basically put one of the scientific modules into a cartridge and then insert that into a container. Of course that all has to be done in this glove box which makes it uh, harder to, to deal with. How's it going? It's going okay at the moment. Uh, we basically just follow the procedures uh, which are, are well written and, uh, and take a step by step through what we need to do. When the Apollo astronauts set off to the moon, people thought that we'd soon live and work on other planets. That didn't happen, but Tim Peake believes that one day it will. The ultimate aim is future exploration of the solar system and to, to get to Mars on a manned mission. So I think we've got a clear idea of where, we're, where we want to aim for eventually. Once in space, Tim Peake will be a national hero and a role model for children. He knows full well the potential for his mission to inspire the nation. Palav Ghosh, BBC News, Cologne.